Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Sandra. I hope you are having a wonderful Sunday and you are ready for Impact Academy. Today is August the 6th and we are getting ready for a great Impact Academy. I'm going to wait just a uh, couple of minutes while you hop on. Uh, welcome, welcome. I see people are hopping on already. Welcome, welcome, everybody. I'm so excited about tonight's topic and it is the three things that happen when God gives you an assignment. So if you're joining in, hello, hello, everybody. Hello, Donna, Cheryl, Ernestine. Welcome, welcome. I see other people are joining in. Hello, Carol. Welcome, welcome. We also have people on the phone. And so uh, people are dialed in on the phones. That's why you see the little earphones in my ear. All right. Hi, Kimberly. Kimberly, excited about being with you and the ladies at the prayer breakfast tomorrow. Really excited about that. All right. So I'm going to give it a few, just to give me about two minutes, and then we are going to go ahead and get started uh, with the teaching on tonight. Uh, like I said, it takes Facebook just a minute because there is a little bit of a lag there. And so, uh, so I want to make sure that um, you all are hearing me well. I see that you all are sending likes through. Thank you so much for that. Uh, you're, you're commenting. Thank you so much for that. I am so excited about tonight's teaching. And again, tonight's teaching is the three things that happen when God gives you an assignment. So, as I was getting ready to say, if you don't already have paper and, paper and pencil, go get it. <laughs> Hi, Kathleen. Hey, Kathleen. Kathleen, you know what this means. <laughs> Okay, so, hi Phyllis, hello Shanika, had a wonderful time with Shanika Thomas and those beautiful Girl Scouts. I don't get to give back to younger children that often, uh, but uh, the Girl Scouts is something that I believe in, so I'm able to give back to them, so I get really excited about that, all right? So, if you, again, if you don't have paper and pencil, please go ahead get your paper and pencil, get it out, get it ready, because you will definitely need it on tonight. I promise you, I promise you tonight is not going to be long. <laughs> All right. I won't tell you why it's not going to be long. Yes, I will. I'll, I'll open with this. Um, I have, I've been working on something and I didn't want to put it down until I finished and I'm almost done. I'm going to do a video tomorrow. Uh, the Lord has given me something about how to expand, uh, the inner circle and how I can do that. Uh, some of you wanted private mentoring. And so with the private mentoring is a little bit different. So I had to make sure that was included. So the inner circle is coming y'all. It is just expanded. You know, let me tell you something. You know, we here at the Vision Building Institute always say that when you move, God will position you for more, right? We always say that when you move, God will position you for more. Well, I will tell you, the, the territory of what I do is expanding into corporate, and I'm so excited about that. And so, and you guys are just wonderful, and how you send me examples of some things that, that I should be thinking about, things that are needed out there. And so I'm doing what you asked to do, doing what you want and what you need. So welcome, uh, Prophetess Scarborough. Welcome, Dr. Tiffany Lopain. Welcome, Prophetess Daphne Washington Davis. Hello, hello. Hi, Ernestine. Well, I'm looking at my clock and it has 9.04. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, like I said, if you don't have pencil and paper, make sure you get pencil and paper. Hello, Joyce. Welcome, welcome. Some of you are new tonight. I know that. Um, I can't see everybody that's on uh, because I usually I can see the people who are on their phones the people who are on their computer I have to get on the computer to see those um, so welcome Jackie welcome Lisa welcome Darlene uh, Pastor Thorne welcome it was great to see you twice this week great to see you um, I've had the opportunity to see some of the vision building women this week because our paths have crossed and some of the things that we're involved we're each involved in and that is so so great today we were able to hear the initial sermon of one of the vision building, vision building women, Lalana Griffin, and it was absolutely fantastic. It was absolutely awesome. Hello, Deborah. Deborah says, hello, everyone. Hello, Lisa. Welcome, welcome. Lisa, I am going to get bold like you one day, my friend. I'm going to get on some jet skis. Now, I can't swim, but I want to learn how to do it. You make it. You make two things look fun. One is horseback riding, and the other is being out there on that water and those jet skis, and I am determined to do it. <laughs> Hey, Cheryl. Welcome, welcome. All right. Now it's 9.05. Let's go ahead and, and get started. As I said, 
My name is Dr. Sandra Wall-Williams, and I am the CEO and founder of the Vision Building Institute. One of the programs that I come to you every single uh, week with uh, as a part of the Vision Building Institute is called Impact Academy. So for those of you that this is the very first time on Impact Academy, Impact Academy focuses on teaching for greatness. That's bottom line, teaching for greatness and teaching for your greater. One thing that you will see is that I always have my notes. I don't come before you without being prepared, so I always have my notes. We try to limit this to one hour, but every now and then I get a little long-winded. It's usually more often I get a little bit long-winded. <laughs> But anyway, so but tonight, I'm really trying to crunch these and get you more impactful, uh, impactful information in a shorter period of time because we do put these up on YouTube. So, and, and people subscribe to YouTube and I just want to make sure that everybody's getting what they need and um, in, the, in the inner circle, when we open that up and there are going to be workbooks and all kinds of things that go along with this, uh, with this inside the inner circle. And so, but, but you guys get a taste of it. You get a taste of it on Sunday evenings. Now, these Sunday evening teachings in the Impact Academy, they are complete. I mean, if you're not a part of the inner circle, that's fine. And but you can get great teaching here. Some of you have been a part of the inner of the Impact Academy since we started. And can you almost believe, y'all? For y'all, for those of you that have been on here since we started. We started Impact Academy in September of 2016. Every single Sunday night I have been on, except for Fifth Sunday, but every single Sunday night I have been online uh, teaching and ministering to you guys through the through Facebook Live. I'm so grateful for this uh, this this particular uh, way of, of interfacing with you guys. And we have learned so, so much. You guys have just blessed me. Um, some of you just blessed me in so many different ways, and I can't thank you enough. And I really thank everybody for being on here for a year. And like I said, until God tells me to stop Impact Academy in this form, then we're going to keep on going. So we're coming up on our one-year anniversary, believe it or not, one-year anniversary of Impact Academy. And we'll have some special things that we're going to be giving away as part of that one-year anniversary. So Impact Academy, as I said, is focused on teaching for your greatness. You know, when I started my firm uh, four years ago, you know, I could see God moving people to another level in their personal lives, in their ministry lives, in their professional lives, in their spiritual lives. I could see God moving us to another level, and I could see God equipping us for greater. And I know that since some of you all have been here in Impact Academy, Impact Academy, because you have told me so, that so many awesome things have happened to you. Um, your, your relationship with God has gotten stronger. You are doing things now that you've never done before. And I tell you, it's not me it's not me it's the teaching that God uses me to deliver and I am just always excited about that and so when God said you know when we started we started this with impact training and then we move uh, from impact training into impact Academy and uh, it's impact Academy because we've got so much training now <laughs> that we've got a year's worth that people can go back and look at and it's all actually grouped inside the Facebook group. There's actually it's actually grouped inside the Facebook group. If you go on the Facebook group and you look under units, then you can see the Impact Academy topics grouped together on there. Okay? Lisa says she's been re-energized. You know what? Me too. I missed y'all last week. I had a heavy assignment last week. I had a job to do uh, at church. There was a lot of people, a lot of different things. It went great. But I tell you what, when I got back home, I was whipped. I was whipped. But I missed y'all so much last week. And I am just re-energized tonight to be bringing the topic to you. Now, one of the things that I see is that as we move forward, you know, one thing that we say in the Vision Building Institute is that when you move, God will position you for more. Okay? If, you have, if you're new and you've never written that down, I need you to write that down. And that is... When you move, God will position you for more. And that's what Impact Academy is all about. It's helping you to move to that greater that God has for you. And that is the greater gifts, the greater works, the greater vision, greater calling, greater anointing, greater purpose, greater business, greater ministry, greater calling, greater career, whatever your greater is. That's what Impact Academy is here to help you do that, okay? The teaching is deep. 
I will tell you, this is not surface teaching. I am not a surface person. You know, somebody said to me uh, the other day, they said, you know what, Dr. Williams, I have just been blessed by being around you. And I said, well, you know what, you, you've, I, I, I do appreciate that comment. Thank you so much. You encouraged me so much. But you've been blessed because I am allowing myself to be used by God. First thing I want to tell you, even before we get into the teaching, there are people out there that are waiting on you to bless them. Got it? There are people out there that are waiting on you to bless them. They're waiting on you to start your assignment. They're waiting on you to walk in your calling so that you are the answer to what they need. Okay? You're the answer to what they need, but they're not going to get it until you begin to walk in your calling. You begin to start the assignment that God has called you to do. Okay. All right. For those of you that are on the phone line, if you would put your, put your, uh, your line on mute, I'd appreciate that. There's, there are people on the phone line, y'all. That's why I have the earphones in now. Uh, people wanted to be a part of impact Academy. Um, but we didn't, uh, they, they, they were not on Facebook. So we added a phone line expanding territory. Okay. Expanding territory. So now I want you all, as we go through tonight's teaching, I want you all to get ready for your greater. Okay. If you're a part of vision building women, and some of you have been a part of vision building women since we started last September, you know, you've been fed, you've been fed, you've been fed. The majority of you are moving out and you're doing what God has called you to do. And what I want you to do as a part of the Impact Academy, I want you all to just invite, invite some, some ladies who you know would benefit from the teaching in here. Invite them to be a part of this group, okay? And I'll be very frank with you. I'll be very frank. People ask to be a part of the group, but not everybody gets in, okay? I got my fan tonight, y'all. I'm not going to get hot. I'm going to get hot because there are tons of lights in this office to keep this thing bright. But um, I will tell you, not everybody gets in, all right? Not everybody gets in. And there's a reason for that because if pe there are people that come in that I have let in and they come in and they just want this to be a place where they can do some more advertising, a place where they can announce their products, okay? And that's not what this group is about. This group is about supporting and teaching Women with vision who want to move forward, how to move forward in their call, their life, their calling, or their career. That's what this group is about. So if you see a, a post in the Vision Building Women group, and then you see the post is not there, that's probably because I took it down. <laughs> if it was something that did not, if it, I thought it was advertising or something like that. Now, and somebody has asked me this question, and then we're going to get straight into the the, the meat of the teaching for tonight. Somebody has asked me, if I'm putting on a program, meaning you, if you're speaking someplace, okay, if you're speaking someplace, if there's something that you're doing um, that, that you want us to be aware of, okay, then by all means, put that in there. Put that in there. But if you've written a book and you want to make us aware of your book, okay, and you want to write something about that, then go ahead and put that in there, okay? But if you're selling vitamins, don't put that in there. Okay, I, I do that and I don't put that in there. Okay, I sell uh, and use um, essential oils. Okay, I do that. I use essential oils all the time and I'm not going to put that in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a separate kind of thing for people who are interested. I'm going to have a separate webinar for that. We're not going to use um, vision building women for that other than just to let you know. Now, one of the things that I'm thinking about doing, I haven't figured out how to do it yet thinking about having a way of having a one day marketplace. So for those people that, that uh, have things that they want to share that they sell and they can put it up. I just haven't figured out how to do it yet. Still getting some wise counsel on that. All right. So now let's go ahead and get started. I have to look at my, keep my clock set over here. Let's go ahead and get started with tonight's topic. The three things that happen when God gives you an assignment, the three things that happen when God gives you an assignment. Now, if you recall, one of the things that we are doing, and you know I made it pretty, okay? Let me get my note out here. One of the things that we're, we're talking about, and I told you guys this, okay? I told you ladies that there are three areas that God has had me just engulfed in in terms of my study and my time with him and what he's been teaching me. And this is what I'm going to be teaching you all based on what you all have been asking for, based on uh, the kinds of things that you all uh, have told me that you needed. This is the three things that I'm going to be teaching on 
over and over and over again. Different topics, different subjects as God gives it to me. But there's three things. So if you're new to this, so you'll, you'll learn it tonight. My, my anointing, the adversary, and my assignment. Can you see that? These three things, my anointing, the adversary, and my assignment. So everything I teach on, everything I preach on is going to be that. So those of you that are going to be at the prayer breakfast, I know the prayer breakfast is by invitation only. Um, it's not my prayer breakfast. It's, it's somebody else's. It's by invitation only. So those of you that are going to be at the prayer breakfast tomorrow, you're going to hear something about this. <laughs> okay? So, but what I found out is that the adversary wants to attack your anointing. The adversary, the adversary, which is the devil, the adversary wants to attack your anointing. The adversary wants to attack and destroy your assignment. Okay. Now here's something that I need you to remember. This is sort of a, a quasi review. Okay. And that is the anointing on your life. The anointing that is on your life attracts the adversary. Now I need for you to understand that if you don't get anything else, Okay, I need for you to understand that the anointing on your life, for those of you that are anointed to do what it is you do. Now, here's something I, I, we, we talked about this a, 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 I think a couple of weeks ago. But I need you to remember that when we talk about the anointing, the anointing is just not used in the church. All right. Don't think that. You are anointed to do whatever God anoints you to do for a particular assignment. Some of you are, are anointed to be medical doctors. I know we have medical doctors on here. We have teachers on here. We have statisticians on here. We have uh, uh, media people on here. We have all kinds of ministers and people walking in fivefold ministry on here. All those people are on here. And God anoints you in each and every one of those areas. So when God anoints you to do something, okay, when he anoints you to do it, it is going to attract the adversary because the devil knows that when God anoints you to do something, then God is going to be glorified and his purpose is going to come forth. Okay. All right. You got that. When, when you are anointed, and all of us are anointed to do something. Sometimes you feel like, you know, people say, well, I'm not anointed because I don't fall out on the floor and I don't do all this and I don't hoop and hop. Uh, that's not what an anointing is. And the anointing is the supernatural power that God gives to you. It is the overflowing presence of the Holy Spirit that gives you supernatural strength to do what it is that you, that God gives you to do. Okay. I'm anointed to teach. I know that I'm anointed to lead. I know that that's because when I do either one of those things, people are transformed. So ask yourself, what has God anointed you to do? Okay. What has God anointed you to do? And you know what? And let me tell you this right here. And this is something that I, I have been learning. Okay. And this is it. It's okay to be anointed. Let me release some of you right now. It's okay to be anointed. All right. It's, let me say it one more time. It is okay to be anointed. Sometimes people are ashamed of their anointing, but when God gives you the ability to do something, then you need to do it under his power and under his authority. Some of you won't go back to school because you're afraid if you get that job and you begin to elevate that when you begin to elevate that people are going to start talking about you. You know what? You can't help the anointing that God has given you. You can try to squelch it if you want, if you want to, but you won't be satisfied. You can try to do all different kinds of things with the anointing on your life, but you're going to have to do the assignment that correlates to the anointing. All right, now let's get, let's go a little bit more review and then we're going to get into the three things. Okay. So we said the adversary wants to attack your anointing. We said that the anointing on your life attracts the adversary. And here's why the anointing attracts the adversary, because the assignment in you is so big, B-I-G. Now, for those of you that have that heard this, this actual full teaching, you know that B-I-G stands for something that one of my mentors gave to me, and that is built in God, okay? The anointing on your life is so big, all right, that the adversary wants to attack it, because he knows that when your anointing begins to feed your assignment, 
okay, then it is so B-I-G, built in God, that the adversary tries to stop it before it gets started. Some of you wonder why it is that, that you don't get started doing things or you keep procrastinating and you won't step out and do that thing that God has called you to do. The reason being is because the adversary wants to keep you down because he does not want you walking in your full anointing. Because when you walk in your full anointing, you will begin to take on the assignment that God has given to you for a particular season. And when you take on your assignment, then the power of God through you is going to begin to bless others. Now, this could be in the workplace. Okay. It could be somewhere in your life, in your home, in your family. It could be in ministry. It could be with a, a calling where you may have something where you want to go out and you want to help other people doing something. Okay, whatever it is. But I need you to know that because your assignment is so B-I-G, because it is so built in God, then the avids, your anointing is all, your anointing for that assignment is always going to attract the adversary. Okay, now last thing and then we're going to get to the three things. Okay, the outcome and this is the anointing, the outcome of your anointing, all right, is walking in your assignment, okay, and we talked about this the last time, all right, that is the outcome of your anointing is walking in your assignment, so when you're walking in your assignment, and you're anointed to do the assignment that God is, that God has given you, all right, when you are anointed to do the assignment that God has given you, and we're going to talk about that part in just a second. When you are anointed to do the assignment that God has given you, then you will see productivity and you will see fruit. All right. If there is no fruit in what you are doing, then you need to ask yourself, number one, is it your assignment? And if it is your assignment, or if you believe it's your assignment, then ask yourself, do I have the anointing for this assignment? Because see, the anointing and the assignment go hand in hand. All right, we'll talk about that in just a second. That's all my one of my three things tonight. All right, so that's a little bit of a review. We did a whole teaching on this um, a couple of weeks ago. I think we actually started with that. We did a whole teaching on the anointing, each one of the uh, topics, the anointing, the adversary, and the assignment. And I think the second week, we talked about why the adversary wants to steal your anointing, why the adversary wants to steal your anointing. And tonight, we're going to talk about the three things that happen when God gives you an assignment. The three things that happen when God gives you an assignment. Here we go. Number one, every time God gives you an assignment, all right, I need you to know this, that every time God gives you an assignment, there is an ad, the adversary is going to assign some, some, one of his imps, something, somebody to your assignment. You need to get this, okay? Every time God gives you an assignment, that assignment could be to go back to school. That assignment could be to write a book. That assignment could be to, to do something different than what you're doing at church. That assignment could be to, to be a part of the prayer ministry. That assignment could be to, to get a certification to do a new job. That assignment could go be go to real estate school. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That assignment could be one of many, many things. But whatever your assignment is, you need to know that every time God gives you an assignment, the devil will assign an adversary to that assignment. Okay? Now, we think that this doesn't happen. You know, I read a book a long, long time ago about uh, understanding your enemy. I don't even re remember who the book was by because it's been so long since I read it. But the book actually talked about the, um, the tricks and the strategy of the enemy. It's a biblical book. talks about the tricks and the strategy of the enemy. Now, I will tell you that when you think about the enemy, we, we want to believe that, that God gives us an assignment, and when he gives it to us, everything is going to be wonderful. Everything is going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Well, here's the thing. Remember that the, the adversary, which is the devil, the adversary wants to destroy your assignment. Now I need you I need you to set some of you free right here. The the adversary the devil does not care about you. He does not care about you. 
What he cares about and what he wants to destroy is the assignment that you are given. Now, why is he wanting to destroy the assignment? Because see, when he gives, when God gives you an assignment, get this now, get this. Make sure you hold on now. Make sure you're writing. When God gives you an assignment, God gives you an assignment for his purpose. All right. He gives you an assignment for his purpose. And you can look in the scripture. And I don't go through all the scriptures in this. We, we're going to begin to do that in, in some of the inner circle. I'll document those scriptures for people who will be in the inner circle as we go through teachings and we go through things a little bit deeper in the inner circle. But when God gives you an assignment and you look in the scriptures, people who got assignments, the assignment was from God. The assignment is for God's purpose. Now keep in mind, the purpose of God for your life is threefold. Now, for those of you that are new, you may not have ever heard this before. All right. So I'm going to set some of you free from continuing to watch and try to find your purpose. All right. I'm going to set some of you free so you don't have to look for your purpose any longer. Your purpose is threefold. If you are a child of God, if you are a believer, then your purpose is one is all three of these things. Number one to glorify God. Number two, to witness to the lost. And number three, to destroy the works of the enemy. Or number one, glorify God. Number two, witness to the lost. Number three, to destroy the works of the enemy. So any assignment that God gives you will have one of those three as its component. So anything that you do when God gives it to you, it's going to glorify him in some form or fashion. You're going to be witnessing to the lost and in some form or fashion, you are going to be destroying the works of the enemy. All right. The devil does not want that purpose to come forth. OK, so as soon as God gives you an assignment, the adversary, the enemy, the devil, same thing, same person, attempts to attack you. All right. And they do that by assigning adversaries to you. Now, this is something I need you to get. Now, when I say adversary, adversary is always something that's external to you. Something that's external. The ad, remember we talked about uh, the, in the first session when we, when we taught on, when I taught on this, I told you about the adversary assigns adversaries to your life. Okay, the adversary assigns adversaries to your life. All right. And in assigning those adversaries, what you see it as, as people talking about you, you see it as people lying on you. We see it as uh, 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 something happening, uh, us not getting a particular job, or we see it as Something began to happen in our life. But all of that is, all that is, is the devil using other people to bring down the assignment that God has given you. You've got to get this. I know y'all writing because y'all not commenting. If you're with me, put up a one or give me some likes or something. If you follow me, you know how I am. I like to know, make sure that y'all are following. All right. If y'all getting this, give me a one or um, give me a, a, a like. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, they're coming in now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I know y'all are taking notes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, hey, Roberta. I didn't know you were in here. Hello, hello. Hi, but Pastor Johnson. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so now let me keep going. Thank y'all for, for doing that. Thank y'all. So now remember, I need you to get this right here, is that every time God gives you an assignment, every time God gives you an assignment, the adversary begins to assign someone to you. Now, this is what I need you to know. I don't want you to think that because someone's coming against you, that that person has, that person is the devil. I don't want you thinking that, okay? But I will tell you, the devil will use people to come up against you, okay? The devil will use other people to attack your assignment. You know, there was something today, and ah, it's on my phone, but I want you all to get this because I want to um, just... Give me a second here. All right. 
I want you all to see this because somebody sent this to me today and I want you all to see it because it is at, it was something by um, Winston, Bill Winston. He put it on Twitter today and I want to read it to you. That when, and this is, this is my part, I'm going to read you what he wrote. When the adversary assigns people to you, when the adversary begins to use people to bring you down, when the adversary begins to take people to begin to speak negative things in your life, okay? When the adversary begins to use people to lie on you, when the adversary begins to use people to uh, attack you verbally, okay? And for some of you, even physically, Okay, when the adversary does that, this is what I want you to keep in mind. This is not me. This is what Bill Winston posted on Twitter today. And he said, every, write this down, that every problem you encounter is a gift wrapped promotion. Oh, come on. You got to get that. Every problem that you encounter is a gift, <coughs> excuse me, a gift wrapped promotion. All right. You got that? I tell you what, when I, somebody sent me that today and it was so powerful, so very powerful because somebody said something to me today in church that they said somebody else was saying about me. And now y'all know y'all have to help me. Y'all know y'all, y'all, those of you that have been in here for over a year, and those of you that know me personally, some of you don't know me personally, but some of you on here know me personally, uh, uh, know that when somebody says something to me, you know, I got a bad habit of running off of my mouth. <laughs> and I'll like right back into you. Well, somebody said something, somebody told me something somebody said today, and I was, and I was really, really just tired of this person uh, talking about me and saying things about me and not coming to me. See, I can deal with you when you come to me, but when you're not warm enough to come to me, then that says something to me to me about who you are. So um, this person says something. So I get up. I'm headed out the door. I'm headed out. Now, y'all, now, now, let me tell you something. I'm in church, okay? In church, on the front row. Got up off the front row, getting ready to go out, getting ready to go tell this person, let's me and you go out here and let's us talk about this because I'm tired of this. But you know what? The Lord had me stop and get my husband. Because my husband doesn't sit on the front row with me. He sits further back in the church. And I motioned for him to come here. I told him about it. And he said, you will not say anything. He said, you will not say anything. And I tell you what, I was on my way out the door. <laughs> okay? On my way out the door. On my way to pull this person out. And getting ready to like, not really lying to them. I was going to do it lovingly. Yeah. I was going to do it lovingly. <laughs> okay? But that's why I thank God for a praying man. I thank God for uh, my husband who covers me, okay? I thank God that he is wiser than I am in certain areas because what I should have recognized, what I should have recognized, and I can use it as an example now, I should have recognized quickly that that was the adversary using adversaries, okay, to come up against me. Because keep, remember, remember, definitely you probably saw me get up and walk out, <laughs> All right, because remember, and this is something that he had to help me understand. That is that when God begins to promote you, when God begins to promote you, look at everything the enemy tries to do to you as a gift wrapped promotion. Okay, so when the adversaries try to come against you, when you get an assignment and you wonder why is it that you cannot, or why it's so hard? Why are people coming against you? Okay, why can't you get the funding? Why can't you, uh, 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 why, why does it, why are you, the, the, this instructor doesn't like you, or you feel like that you're not learning in this class, or, or why is this happening, or why is that happening? Remember, an adversary, the, the, the adversary has assigned adversaries to your assignment, not to you. Come on now, get this. The, the adversaries aren't assigned to you. They're assigned to what it is that you are carrying. Come on, you got to get that. They are not assigned to you. The adversaries are assigned to what you are carrying. Okay, I learned something from a great brother. His name is Ryan Brooks. Ryan Brooks taught me something 
once about football. Okay. Um, he had preached it and I asked, he preached it one Sunday at our church and I called Ryan. I said, Ryan, I got some questions as I always do. So, and then Ryan said something to me, you know, when you, I thought, I thought that when you played football, I thought that the object of the football or football game was to bring down the man carrying the ball. That you did not want the man carrying the ball to get across into the end zone. All right. I thought it was about the man carrying the ball. But what I came to understand in talking to him, Overseer Brooks, Overseer Ryan Brooks, and in studying a little bit about football myself, is that the reason that you knock the man down, come on now, you got to get this, that the reason that you knock the man down is because you don't want him getting the football in the end zone. Okay. Because once the football gets in the end zone, it doesn't matter if the man, the whole man is in the end zone, or it doesn't matter if just the football, if he has his arms in the end, if he's got his hands on the ball and that's in the end zone. But as long as his hands are on the ball and that ball is in the end zone, then it becomes a touchdown. Okay. I need you to get this right here. The enemy is trying to keep you from getting your assignment into the end zone. Oh, come on. The enemy is trying to get you or keep you. The adversary is trying to keep you from getting your assignment into the end zone because the enemy knows that if you get into the end zone, then you're going to be glorifying God. You're going to be witnessing to the lost and you're going to be destroying the works of the enemy. Okay, come on, y'all. I hope y'all are getting this right here. So I need you to understand tonight that is... Every single assignment has an associated group of adversaries. So if God gives you an assignment, we get all excited. We get, it's hot in here, y'all. These, either it's hot in here or these, light, these lights get hotter and hotter every time, okay? When God gives you an assignment, okay, you better know that the enemy is going to want to come and take you out because he does not want you completing or even starting the assignment. The reason why some of you haven't started what God has called you to do, it's not you. It's the adversaries coming up against you all up in your mind, all up in your business, all up in trying to tell you why you should not do something. Okay, some of you are waiting on some kind of help to get started. Well, have you picked up a book? Have you been to the library? Have you done something? Okay, have you done something such that you're moving and God will give you more? Have you done something? You just move. And as soon as you begin to move, you best believe the enemy, the adversary, the devil is going to assign some adversaries to it. So I want you to be gung-ho about vision. I want you to be gung-ho and be excited about what God has assigned to you to do. But I don't want you to be ignorant and thinking it's all going to be glorious and it's all going to be great because that is not going to happen. Okay? All right? It's not going to happen. All right? So now let me look at some comments. Oh, somebody's saying, oh, come on and talk to us, Elder. Hey, Daphne, love you, love you. Uh, uh, Ernestine, getting it, getting it. Great word. Thank you, uh, uh, Elder Clark. Um, uh, Phyllis said, probably Scarborough, but he may, he may try it, but it won't happen. I'm going in the end zone. Exactly, exactly. You've got to, you've got to know that your assignment, you want to get your assignment into the end zone. Now, let me get on number two. All right. Uh, Joyce says, as long as uh, you are never completing your assignment, the adversary is rejoicing. That's right. Exactly. As long as you're not even starting, I won't even say completing. The adversary wants you to not even start because if you don't, if you don't start, then he's still rejoicing. OK, now let me get to number two. So number one was that what happened, one of the three things that happens every time you get an assignment is that the adversary is going to assign adversaries to the assignment. He's going to attack the assignment. Okay. He's going to make it such that you won't work on the assignment. Okay. Now, number two, and this is something you need to remember. And this is something that Dr. Tiffany Lopane told me last night. She and I were talking last night and she and I are going to be doing some things together. Y'all better watch out because two powerful women, uh, we're going to be coming together and we're getting ready to do some things. So y'all better watch out. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now, Every, this is something she told me last night as she and I were talking. And she said that every assignment has an affliction. Every assignment 
has an affliction. Now, she watched a sermon on that. I didn't watch the sermon on it, but this is what God showed me when I looked, I began to research this deeper and I went into his word and just began to see what God's word had to say about assignment and affliction. And that, uh, that is, afflictions are specific to you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Afflictions are specific to you. So now I don't want you to confuse the adversary bringing ad bringing adversaries to you. Those are people that attack you. Those adversaries in number one that every assignment has an adversary has an adversary. Those are specific people that the devil is using to attack you. Okay. Now an affliction is something that happens to to you something that happens in your life that really brings you down that's what the affliction is so every assignment has an affliction so when god gives you an assignment then what is what could happen and what sometimes we allow to happen we allow our afflict we allow something about us to not allow the assignment to go forth, okay? We allow something about us to not allow the assignment to go for, forth. So for example, we'll say things like, I don't have the money, or I'm not in good enough health, or my child, I need to take care of my child. God's giving me this assignment, but I can't do it because I've got my, got to uh, be giving you my children. Let me think, tell you something that I've learned is that I have been doing, when God gave me ministry and told me to start in ministry, Bradley was three, okay? When God gave me ministry and told me to start in ministry, Bradley was three years old, okay? Bradley was three years old, okay? And one of the things I learned is that when God gives you an assignment, don't let the afflictions that you put on yourself stop the assignment that God has given you. Now, sometimes we want to confuse the affliction that we put on ourselves with the adversary, the adversaries. But in this case, the person that the adversary is using to bring upon affliction in your life is you. Mm, get that one. Okay? When the adversary assigns adversaries other people to your assignment that's one thing it's one thing when people are talking in your ear and telling you what you can't do it's one thing when people are telling you you're not good enough it's one thing when people tell you that you don't have enough education it's one thing when people when people tell you this but you afflict your own assignment when you tell yourself that you're not good enough when you tell yourself that I can't do something and you want to put the blame on your children, but don't blame it on your children. Blame it on you. When you tell yourself, I'm not healthy enough or I can't do something. Now, it's one thing when you are afflicted in pain and, and those kind of things. That's one thing. And you physically just can't get up. All right. But I know someone who right now, she may even be, I think she's actually on here, who right now in the midst of having a double mastectomy was still doing her assignment, okay? In the midst of being cut on. Okay, I've never had a mastectomy. I've never had, uh, I praise God, I've never had to, to deal with anything like that. I've had biopsies and stuff like that, but I've never had anything like that removed. But I know this woman had both a double mastectomy. And in the midst of all that, still preaching the word. In the midst of all that, still encouraging and ministering to other people. Okay, so don't allow yourself your own affliction, the things that you put on yourself, don't allow that to destroy your assignment. Sometimes it's not other people the adversary is using. Sometimes we allow ourselves to become our own adversary and we begin to speak things to ourselves that don't line up with God. Because see, one of the things I understand, I, I have come to understand is that when God gives you an assignment, all right, he gives it to you because he can trust you with it 
And he knows that you are the one that he's prepared to give the assignment to. Okay? He knows that. But for whatever reason, we, we let other people, one, and we let ourselves, two, stand in the way of being able to move forward. Okay? We allow that to happen. Okay? And we have got to stop it. All right? Because the assignment on your life is so B-I-G, built in God, and God wants you to carry it out. All right? Yes, I totally agree, Kimberly. Self-deception. Some of you are walking in your own self-deception. Some of you have convinced yourself that you are not good enough, that you are not smart enough, that you are not pretty enough, that you are not rich enough, that you are not healthy enough, that you are not whatever enough that you can't do what God has assigned you to do. Well, let me tell you something. Let me release you tonight. All right. Let me break that right now. Let me release that and let you know that if God gave you the assignment, then yes, you have what is necessary and what is needed to carry it out. Okay. Yes. Oh, my husband's coming in the room and telling me. <laughs> All right. Don't come this way now. What are you looking for? Okay. He says, I, I said what you're looking for. Okay. You. They can hear the, the the TV. Okay. I keep that I keep my office door closed, but when they open it, all those noises come in. I kept was keeping it closed earlier because there's a, a football players downstairs. But uh in my house. When you when you're when you're a mom of boys, those of you that are that are moms of boys, you know all kinds of things happen in your house. All right? So let's go back. So now remember, don't allow yourself to tell yourself, okay? What you can't do. Y'all, I'll tell you what. Some of you have enormous vision. I've talked to you. I know. Okay? How you, Kathleen asked the question. How can you be clear that God has given you an assignment? We're getting ready to get ready to go that. That's number three. <laughs> you walked me right into that one, Kathleen. All right? Well, how can we be clear that God has given us an assignment? That is number three. I'm getting ready to tell you in just a second. All right? So, when God gives you an assignment, you know the devil is going to come up against. He's going to use others to come up against you. That's number one. Number two, he's going to try to use you to come up against yourself. The self-esteem, low, le low levels of confidence, okay? Things that you feel that you can't do. I said if one more person tells me they want to do something but, all right? That word, but, you know, that word, but can destroy people. The only time I want to hear, but is if you saying, but God, all right? The only time I want to hear, but when you're in, when you're talking to me, if you might say, well, Dr. Sandra, I can't do it, but God, all right? That's when I want to hear the but, all right? And, and I tell you, talk to yourself this way. Let yourself know that I may not have or I may feel like I don't have everything it takes right now, but let yourself know that because what God has placed on the inside of you is so big, because it's built in him, because it's so big, then let yourself know that when you depend on him, when you depend on God, that's the only but that you need to be concerned about, but God. You can't do it. I agree. That's why it was built in God. <laughs> That's why it's big. Built in God. Because you can't do it. You have to allow God to walk you through it. Let's get to number three. Let's review these. Number one, every assignment has an, we'll say, an external adversary. All right? There are people that the devil has assigned to your assignment. He wants to keep your assignment out of the end zone. Number two, every assignment has an affliction. All right. Every assignment has an affliction, an internal. That's internal. That's you bringing down yourself so that you don't get started on your on your assignment. OK. And you may say, well, Dr. Sandra, I, you know, I've never seen you do that. Oh, you've never seen it. But I have. OK. I've told myself lots of times as to why I shouldn't do something or as to why something is not working. OK. Or why I haven't started something. All right. I've done that lots of times. And then every single time I say, you know what? I've got to trust God 
Some things, what God has given me is just written down. And my, my book is, I've got three books over here, but they're written down in books. All right. The whole thing is all mapped out. And then what, then what God does is he brings somebody in to help me and we, we move it forward. Sometimes the reason why you haven't started something, you haven't got something, is the right people haven't come along yet. Okay. But that doesn't mean that you don't write it down. Get it out of your head. Get it out of your heart and write it down. One of the things that we talk about, we talked about in the inner circle last time, is writing everything down that God has called you to do. Every assignment that God has given you, write it down. Okay? We did that last time. All right, now let's get to number three. The question was, how can we be clear that God has given us an assignment? Here it is. You, every, that is, you, can, you can be clear that God has given you an assignment because every assignment has an anointing. Every assignment has an anointing. Let me say it one more time. Every assignment has an anointing. If you are not anointed for it, it is not your assignment. Ooh, let me release some of y'all. Now, some of you do some things that you have been trained to do. Okay? That's on your job. Uh, some of you are doing some things that you've gone to school to learn how to do. That's great. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about those assignments that have been given to you by God. Those assignments that have been given to you that you even wonder if you should do. Okay? Those assignments that are scary to you and sometimes you get a little fearful, but you, you still step out on God and do it anyway. Those are the kinds of assignments. And you know God has given you assignment when you are anointed to do the assignment. You know God has given you assignment that when you don't do it, when you don't step out in it, you're not fulfilled. Okay? You know God has given you an assignment when all that you think about, all that you pray about, all that you pick up something and read is about what God has called you to do. Because God is going to keep it in your face. See right here? Okay? God is going to keep the assignment right here. It's going to be in your face. It's going to be in your face all the time. You're going to see yourself doing it when you're not doing it. You're actually going to be doing it even when you're not doing it. Okay? You need to, I'm teaching even when I'm just having a conversation. Sometimes I go into teaching mode and don't even realize it. All right? When God gives you these, um, can I use uh, Pastor Vanessa? Can I use you? Let me, let me get permission before I... Uh, call you out. <laughs> if you say no, I'm cool. I'll wait till you come up. I'll keep talking until you, till you respond. I want to use Pastor Vanessa. I want to talk about uh, an assignment that, that, that they have said yes to. I think everybody knows now, but I want to make sure Pastor Vanessa before I use you. Okay. So, but every time I get, okay, she says I can use you. Thank you, Pastor Vanessa, Pastor Johnson. So, uh, Vanessa Johnson and her husband, Vanessa was actually, um, one of my very, as a matter of fact, my very first coaching client. Vanessa was my very first coaching client and, and I coached Vanessa and the next thing I know, she's written a book, she's done all these things and now, and, and there were some things that God had given her that I could see and she and I talked about, but they were big, they were huge, okay, and Vanessa was like, is this my assignment, is this what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, how do I know that, and I said, well, Vanessa, you know, when the, the anointing is going to match the assignment. Okay. When God gives you the assignment, whatever that assignment is. Okay. This is the assignment. Okay. Say this fan is the assignment. Okay. Then the anointing that is needed for this assignment. Okay. The anointing that's needed for it is already going to be resident in you. Mm. Some of you have taken on assignments that you have been thinking that they are difficult assignments and it's not that they are difficult assignments. It's just that you don't have the anointing to carry it out. That's not a bad thing. Okay. What that means is that's just not the assignment for you. Okay. When Vanessa and her husband, when they began to pray and begin to think about what God was calling them to do, they didn't step out right away. They began to cultivate 
cultivate the call on their life. They began to seek God and make sure they understood what was required for this new pastoral walk they were getting ready to go into. And I will tell you, they're picking up and leaving. They're picking up and moving. But they can't do that without the anointing for the pastorate or for being a shepherd on their life. Okay? Now, the anointing was already there. The anointing was already there. But you have to know that you have an anointing for something. You have to know that God is going to work supernaturally in you. Because I tell you what, when you don't know it, you'll quit. When you don't know it, when it gets hard, you'll stop. Okay, so every, checking the time, every single assignment, there is an anointing resident in you to carry it out. You can look at every single person in the Bible that when God gave people an assignment, he gave them what was necessary to carry it out. So if God has said you are to lead something, if God says I'm calling you to lead something, and you feel you don't have what it takes, it's there. You've got to ask God and to, to give you, to continue to help you develop, okay, to, to develop what it's needed to carry it out because the anointing, the supernatural power is already there. You have to get whatever it's needed and whatever is necessary. It might be more classes. It might be more books. It might be uh, uh, getting wise counsel, whatever it is. But what you need supernaturally is already there. God has already given you what you need. You may have to get, be, get yourself more prepared. But God is, and I wrote this down, I want to tell you, that God does not give an assignment if the anointing is not already in you to carry it out. Okay. Now, somebody can speak it, okay? Well, this, I want you to get this. Somebody can speak it and they can say to you, and this, this is what some people mess up. Somebody can say to you that I know that you're going to be a pastor. Right? I can see it on you. But let me tell you something. If you don't have the anointing for that, if you know you don't have the anointing for that, then don't step out in somebody else's voice. Don't step out and do something that somebody else said you can do just because they said it. That's why sometimes our assignments get so hard because the anointing that is necessary for the assignment is not in you. I hate to bust your bubble. For some of you have been doing something for a long time and you, you, you've been wanting it to get grow and grow and grow and grow and it won't grow. That's because the anointing. That is not the anointing that is needed for you to carry out that assignment. It's not there. Now, does that mean that, for example, I walk into a hospital room. Now, I walk into a hospital room. I expect, I expect that I am so gifted and I am so, I, would use, I don't want to use the word gifted, that I am so anointed that I walk in the hospital room. I start laying my hands on folk. I expect people to give up, get up. All right. I expect, I, that's how anointed. That's what God has said. That is my, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what you're supposed to be doing. But do I walk at that level of anointing? I have seen people do it. I have seen. Yes, I have. I've seen people walk in a hospital room and begin to lay hands on people because she knew that her assignment was that of going in the hospital rooms and lifting people up. And I've seen her walk in and, and lay hands on folk and folk get up. I've seen it. Okay. That's not my anointing. That doesn't mean that God can't use me to do it because God can do whatever he wants to do. But that's not, the, that's not the anointing I have on my life. The anointing I have on my life is to teach. The anointing that I have on my life is to lead. The anointing that I have on my life is to coach and to mentor. Okay, that's the anointing on my life. The anointing that I have on my life is to equip others for the active Christ-like holiness and for the things that God has called them to do. That's the anointing that I have. I've looked at everything that God has called me to do, every situation that God has put me in, and it is such that I can take it in and build others up so that I can teach you and help you do what God has called you to do. I know the anointing I have on my life. My question for you is tonight, do you know what your anointing is? Do you know that when you're doing something, whatever it is that you're doing, Whatever assignment that God has on your life right now, do you have the anointing for it or are you just kind of doing it because somebody else said it was good? Somebody else said you should be doing this. Somebody else said you should be writing a book, 
or you should write a book. Some of you don't have the anointing to write a book. I'm not saying that God can't give it to you. Okay. You can pray for an anointing. That's in the word too. There were people in the Bible that prayed for an anointing and God gave it to them. So if you want to do something and you feel that you don't have the anointing for it, if there's an assignment that you want, there's an assignment that you desire, there's an assignment in your heart, and you feel like you don't have the anointing, then you ask God for it. Then you ask God for that anointing. You ask, And if that is an assignment that, that is in God's purpose for you, then believe me, God is going to give it to you. But don't step out into an assignment. Oh, come on now. Don't step out into an assignment that you don't have the anointing for because you will get frustrated. You will get tired. You will begin to let the enemy take you down. And then what will happen is that you will not go forward. You will quit. Okay. I've been there. I've done that. Okay. I've, I've, I've done things that I didn't have the anointing for. I was gifted. I was gifted. And I could do the work. You need to get this. You can be gifted and have the ability to do the work. You can have the natural ability to do the work. But when God gives you an assignment, you have to have the supernatural ability to carry it out. Okay? Now, does that mean you're going to be running and jumping and praising the Lord and jumping? No. No. Okay? For some of you, it might. Okay? But what it means is that God gives you a supernatural ability to carry out something that he needs done for his purpose, for the purpose of, of God in the earth. Okay. Glorify him, witness to the lost and destroy the works of the enemy. Those three things. Okay. So when God gives you an assignment, okay, search, know the anointing is there. And if you feel like you need more to build your faith, if you need more to learn and to grow, then go get it. Go ask the questions. Go sit under a mighty man, a woman of God. Okay. When God called me into ministry, there were some things that I knew I just didn't know. And I knew that, you know, I just, I, I knew I didn't, as a matter of fact, I didn't know what I didn't know. <laughs> All right. I didn't know what I didn't know. So what did I do? Dr. Shirley R. Brown. I tell you what, I talk about her all the time and she's even still, I've been in ministry for over 20 years and she's even still covers me in ministry. She even, even now, if I have a question, I'm going to call her and I, and I ask her, I try not to bother her so much because now, uh, she's an apostle. And so she has churches and people under her. So I know that she's very busy. Okay. She's very productive. I don't like to use the word busy. She's very productive and everybody calls on her, but I know if I have a question, I know she'll, she'll answer my call because she's, she's, she's just that concerned about what God has called me to do. And I also know that when I'm incorrect, that she'll correct me. Okay. You need people like that in your life. Some of you need anointed people in your life. Some of you have been in this uh, impact Academy. And the reason why your life is changing is because you're connected with me. Some of you have even told me that. And it's not me that you're connecting with. It's what God is using me to give to you. It's not me. Okay, it's not me that some of y'all have written books and have started ministry and have started companies and have doing all, getting ready to go to a different state and be pastors. That has nothing to do with me. It has to do with me allowing God to use me. It has, a, has to do with the anointing on my life to carry out the call on my life. So what I'm telling you is that when God gives you an assignment, three things are going to happen. Number one, the adversary is going to assign little bitty adversaries to try to pull you down. Okay. Number two, you are going to have an affliction and don't allow yourself to be that affliction of your assignment. And then number three, the, uh, when you, when God gives you an assignment, the anointing is already there, but make sure that you know that number one, that you know, the anointing is there. And then you begin to increase your faith so that you can walk in that anointing that God has given you for the assignment. So whatever assignment that you're doing right now, if it's going back to school, then you can do it. Okay. And if you don't feel you have the anointing, ask God for it. Because I will tell you something. There is an anointing to be able to study. Everybody can't study. Come on now. There's an anointing to be able to study. 
If God has called you to start a church, there's an anointing to be able to pastor. If God has called you to start a ministry, there's an anointing to be able to do that. If God has called you to lead, there's an anointing to be able to do that. If God has called you to write a book, there's an anointing to be able to write, even to get the information out. Hey, Dr. Grant, how are you? If God has called you to, to bring in one of the hidden figures to bless women of STEM, come on now. Dr. Grant is bringing in one of the ladies from Hidden Figures, and I am going to be there. Yes, I'm going to be there, Christine. So I am so excited. I got invited to that, to be a part, to meet one of the ladies of Hidden Figures, and let this woman who doesn't even know me, who I'll probably never see again, but I am going to sit at her feet. I think it's next Thursday or next Tuesday, and I am going to allow her to pour into me in a way that probably I've never been poured in before. Okay? Because she has an anointing to do that. Come on now. Y'all need to understand assignment and anointing. And if you are walking in an assignment that you are not anointed for, here's a big thing. If you are not, if you are walking in an assignment that you are not anointed for, then there will be no fruit. Ask yourself, what fruit is coming from what I am doing? Let's get quiet. Let me hear the crickets. Okay, what fruit is coming from what I am doing? Is the activity, is it 10 o'clock? I always go over, okay? <laughs> okay, I always go over. But ask yourself, what fruit is coming from what I'm doing? Because you know what? When you get an assignment and the anointing is there, there's also, I wish I had three hands, okay? <laughs> that did not be deformed. But when you get an assignment, and then there's the anointing that you have to carry out the assignment, there's always going to be fruit. There's always going to be something that you're going to see that's the outcome of your anointing. When somebody calls me and they tell me they're going back to school, that's the outcome of, it's not my anointing, but that's the outcome of the teaching anointing in me. When somebody calls me and tells me that, you know, they've started their business, that their vision is coming forth, it's the outcome. All right. When Dr. Grant, she and I talked about some of the things that she wanted to do for women in STEM. STEM is an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Dr. Grant is a chemical engineering professor, and she told me some of the things that she wanted, she's wanted to do. Dr. Grant is anointed for that. And she's bringing that here, and I'm just, I'm just excited to be a part of that. All right, I'm just excited to be a part of that. So that the thing is, is that when you are anointed to do something, all right, God is going to give you an assignment that lines up with that anointing. When you are anointed, God is going to give you an assignment that lines up with your anointing. And if you're not anointed for something, or if you, if you take on, I'm not going to say God gave it to you. Because some of us take on assignments that we say are God given, and we're the one that said yes. When you take on an assignment that God has not given you, hence you are not anointed for it, then you are going to be so frustrated and you're not going to have any fruit. You're just not. All right? Chris, Dr. Grant says, we have been so blessed by your ministry over the years. God bless you. Sometimes you need to just wait and serve first. That's right. That's what I've learned to do. The waiting is hard at times. Be patient and faithful. That is such a blessing. Because some of you all don't know this, but Dr. Christine Grant, now, when you talk about anointing, when you talk about anointing, she saw the anointing in me. And this is a woman who has a PhD. One of five women that has a PhD. A full professor in chemical engineering. And you know what she did? She served as my armor bearer. She served as my adjutant for about two years. She served me for about two years. I was humbled because she was my teacher. When I got to NC State and I was a, a, a junior professor, I didn't know anything, but she took me under her wing. And she taught me everything. She served me. She did all these kinds of things for me and, lift, and, and elevated me. And then when God and elevated me at the university, and then when God began to elevate me in ministry, where she wanted to be, then she began to serve me. So that's what it's all about. So you see, I had an anointing. She had an anointing to help me as a junior professor. 
I had an anointing to help her. So whenever she asked me to do something as a junior professor, I did it. If she said, write this grant, I was on this grant with her. Whatever she asked me to do. And now we do the same kind of thing. So y'all, I'm telling you, you need somebody in your life. You need somebody in your life that will help pull that anointing out of you. Some of you have the anointing, but you want to keep it in you because, what is it? Because you want to stay afflicted. You want to stay in affliction. I don't think afflicted is a word, <laughs> but you want to stay in affliction. That's that self. That is that self-deception. That's putting down of self. That was number two. But I tell you what, when God gives you an assignment, if you feel you don't have the anointing, pray for it. All right? Because it's there. It's there. I can tell you that. It's there. But if you don't know how to get it out, allow somebody to work with you that can pull it out of you. Okay? Like I said, I have mighty strong women in my life. I've got some strong women in my life. My mom, Dr. Brown, my coaches. I have two, um, three actually amazing coaches that I, I do. I pay. I pay them because I need them in my life. Okay. My pastor who's gone on to be with the Lord. He still pours into me because I look at some of the notes that I took from him. Those kinds of things. So y'all, when God gives you an assignment, I want you to know, like number one and number two were about the adversary, what the adversary tries to do, and about the affliction that he tries to use in you. But the third one overrides the other two. When the anointing is there, when the anointing is there, then let me tell you, you will do that assignment. And if you feel like, oh, God is giving me a, an, an assignment, but I don't have the anointing, then hook up with somebody. Hook up may be the wrong word. Okay. <laughs> then align yourself. <laughs> That's that little feeling coming out. Align yourself with someone who can pull that anointing out of you, who can stretch you beyond, far beyond anything that you've ever even thought you could do. Like the Bible says that he will do more than we can think or imagine. Okay? Allow that to happen in your life. Now, I hope that you all got something out of tonight. If you got something out of tonight, give me some likes. Give me a one. Let me know that this teaching was good for you on tonight. Let me know that this teaching was good for you on tonight. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some of you I will see on tomorrow at the prayer breakfast. I'm so looking forward to that. Kimberly, I'm going to be speaking at the prayer breakfast on tomorrow. For those of you that are in the uh, um, Burlington, Mebane, Greensboro area, I will be preaching, doing a woman's workshop uh, in Mebane on Saturday and then preaching on in Mebane on, on Sunday. I'll have this information in the Facebook group for those of you that are in that area. I'll definitely be there. I would love to see some vision building women in the house. Okay. And uh, at the end of the month, at the end of August, I'll be in Atlanta with Felicia Phillips, the pink Panure, myself, Dr. Tiffany Lopain will be in Atlanta and we'll be speaking at the business women's expo. And we're excited about that. So God anoints you to do Okay, whatever he, whatever assignment he gives you. And y'all, I'm so excited, so excited, okay? And just know, just know, just know that when God gives you an assignment, the enemy is going to try to keep you from getting that assignment in the end zone, but the anointing is there. Allow God's anointing to overflow so that you can give people what they've been waiting for. All right. So y'all have a great and wonderful week and we will see you next week. Now, next week I'm going to be teaching you on, and this is a whole series of things here, teaching you on the, the things you must do when God gives you an assignment. It's going to be rough. Y'all we're going to go deep. Okay. Deeper. Okay. But the things you must do when God gives you an assignment. That's next week's topic. I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Stay tuned in the Facebook group. You know we're always updating it. If you're not on my email list, make sure that you go to www.drsandraspeaks, Dr. Sandra Speaks, and go and sign up for my email list. I'll be glad to have you and be excited to, uh, to be able to communicate with you via email. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Love you and have a great week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.